It's just, there's such a gap. It's more one team region than I think it's been in the last couple of years. If someone speaks to you, sometimes the information just goes out the other ear. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make a bold prediction. G2. Hello and welcome to the jungle with Judy Covey, Medic, and our special guest filling in this week for Roxa. We have Finn from the LEC. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we're gonna be talking about M our MSI predictions, and we're also gonna be talking about some potential more roster changes. But first things first, LEC Finals. I'm going to start with you, Finn, because maybe you can tell everybody who mega lol you are and also what you thought about the LEC Finals because you worked at desk, right? Yes, I actually did work at the Finals. I was there. I think, um, who am I? I'm Finn. I'm top laner for Rogue in the LEC. After a great split, we did not do that well, but next split will be better. Uh, I'm also doing streaming and analyst work for LEC in my free time. And, like and uh, subscribe. And you had a, you had a lot of free time, right? So uh, I, oh. I, I, uh, okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> you you're yeah, setting yeah. the tone really early here, <laughs> and you're opening yourself up for some comebacks here. I'll yeah. I'll come back to you later, man. Welcome to but, the jungle. Uh, I'll come back to you later, but yeah, uh, LEC finals. I thought they were, I thought they would be one sided, but it didn't. It, it didn't. I feel like Fnatic just got team gapped. What I felt like it was really hard was men, uh, naming a finals MVP. I don't know what you think, Medic, because you also had to do this. Uh, I was I really didn't actually with do this. it because I was quite drunk at the time. Yeah. They, were, they sent out the message on Slack, and I'd been drinking for like two hours with Quickshot while watching the games. No. So I was like, I have, I, I don't know enough about these games to, yeah. to give a finals MVP. It's no, I thought that was really there. challenging. To, it was definitely difficult. Finals looking MVP. back at the games, I'm yeah. not sure who I would have given it to. But you could have given it to yourself before being drunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> playing exactly. Magic the Gathering. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think Caps, like, he played really well. Uh, I played generally well. But I, the games were so messy that it was quite hard. Like, it, as you say, it was a team gap, right? It was just yeah. an addict would get a lead and then not be able to play mid-game mid as well as G2 were able to play mid-game and take a few bad fights and lose the game. So, uh, yeah. yeah, give it to Caps. You know, it's always a safe bet. That's probably what happened in most people's minds. They were like... Caps is safe. I think Caps had the best split of anyone on G2. Mm -hmm. So That's if we're true, doing yeah. like a general split, then I think Caps has probably been the best performer in the LEC as a whole anyway. For a while. Because Caps is Caps. Yeah. I, I think as well though, like besides like the analytical point in terms of like how the LEC went, I would I think I would really like to have a discussion in terms of it being in a studio. Because not to like brag or anything, but I did the LPL. We, it wasn't even the finals. It's like the playoffs, the lower bracket, the uh, uh, top bracket, like finals. And this is done in person in an arena. Is a JDG arena. Fair enough. Beijing, 2,000 people attending, screaming, shouting, crying. Like, what? And then you look. I look at the LEC and I'm like, yay, finals, G2, Fnatic. Hee hee, you're going to have a great time. And it's like 20 people. I'm one of the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Like, I don't Go know what more to say, Jimmy. Yeah. It sucks a lot. Like, I, the first final I ever cast was 2019 Athens in an arena in front of like 10,000 people, and it felt like a, a big thing, right? Like, it felt like this incredible thing, and now it feels very second rate. And I know, like, this is no qualms against anyone who's running the show or doing, like, working on the show on that day. Everyone's trying their yeah, of course out not. to, like, do the best yeah. show they can. But it doesn't feel the same. And going from the LCK finals and watching the intro they had and watching the whole crowd there and all the flags and then the, the video they did and then everyone holding those lights and seeing Genji appear out of the stage and then going to, hey, here's some confetti cherry blossoms and our team's walking out the same way they've walked for every other, every other performance feels really bad. Um, yeah, it, it's fucking shit, and it hurts. And on Reddit, the last couple of days have been like three or four posts of like LEC's really shit at the moment because the content isn't as good, and the finals felt really weak. And yeah, all I can say is it, it fucking sucks to be on it as well at times, right? Like we're putting our hearts into the show, and the money yeah. isn't there, or whoever higher up is saying that they don't want to do finals in a venue, so we can't do finals in a venue. Do you think for LCS, though, as well, I think here, Kabi, same for LEC, I'm leaving this question to both of you. Would there be enough people to attend? Because you're looking at LCK, you're looking at LPL, and like these seats are fully sold out. People are waiting to potentially get in last minute. But is there enough people for the LCS? Is there enough people for LEC to be like, yeah, let's do a live final for a split? Uh, I mean, I've been at quite a few of the live finals because I will say that 
it, even being a tier two caster, riots was nice enough to make sure that we got tickets for those. When yeah, it was apparently in the arena. you spoke too much. You ruined people's yeah. time. Yeah, you know, well, that, that's a, that's a whole different story. That was hilarious, man. I've never had people make make things up about me on the internet before. That was fun. Um, I I was told by my old boss that she knew it was fake when a mom didn't like me. So that that's a nice note to have from an old yeah, boss. Makes you know? sense. Nice. Yeah. Uh, regardless, um, I I mean I've been there and like the usually it's a basketball arena here in the states. Uh, and I'd say that like consistently they get 10k plus people there even for spring. Uh, with these arenas i mean it's something where i i think the biggest thing for me is like it, it hurts that it's not aspirational anymore you know i, I know in the past that uh there are more discussions about hey is this break even or not and riot has this direction top down where they want their leagues to at least be break even at best they want things to be profitable on its own and they're trying to take a lot of steps to do that and a lot of that has just involved narrowing things they don't think provides a ton of value and that's like no fun. And what medic, like what you're experiencing right now, I mean, I had a similar uh, conversation with Flowers earlier this split where he's like, man, it feels so good that the general vibes of the LCS are decent this split. And like, we aren't just being harassed online for stuff, right? That, that gets to you. I, I know that ev like everyone works hard to put on the show that they're on, right? And it's a lot more fun when everyone behind the scenes really appreciates that versus not, right? Like that yeah. actually goes a long way if you're on it. But uh, it's one where like, I, I mean, I'm sitting in combines now with, like, these young players that are trying to be pro, and like, even they're, like, like, they're not as invested in this. Like, they, there aren't as many that are like, yeah, this is 100% what I want to do. Like, I want to go have my chance to play in Madison Square Garden and perform. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. And I, I think that there is a real power to having this, especially with just talking about people that want to pick up the game and be that next generation of pro players. Mm -hmm. Real power to having this be aspirational for everyone involved like what medic said he got to do a 20k arena as, as a caster like he how sick 10. is that you know i did say 10 yeah but well, i've done 20k arenas as well yeah. so we'll, okay you know, happen, yeah, so you know. humble brag okay yeah okay. yeah um but yeah it, it, like i have no doubt we'd be able to fill out 5k per split okay. if we wanted to i think having th like three splits in a season finals kind of makes it a little bit like different but mm -hmm. if you go to a different country i have no doubt like if you went to spain or if you went to portugal or if you went like a uh, north like we filled out malmo Friends. yeah we went we filled out stockholm. Montpellier. we went to we could go to stockholm um, Malmo was fun yeah i think that it's just that they don't want to do it anymore right and part mm -hmm. of that is as cubby says is it, it feels like a top down if it doesn't make you money you don't do it because we can afford one per split but, uh, per year but we can't do more than that um and it, do it loses a lot of the luster that it used to have, right? Like, part of the reason I got into casting was because you could travel and you do all of these cool events and you go to cool locations and you get to do these cool things. And now it's like, well, I get to cast in the LEC studio for not even just for, like, most of this year, like, for probably for 80% of this year. Because, like, Worlds is in the LEC studio. Not just Titans as well, like the Swiss stage. Uh. We're going to have, like, T1 versus JDG or whatever in the LEC studio. And I don't know exactly why that's happened because I... As much as we can shit on some of the decision making, I have no doubt in my mind they didn't want the, the group stage to be in the LEC studio. I like, I really sincerely doubt that someone at Riot said this is what we want for our premiere broadcast, right? And maybe a, a venue fell through, maybe something bad happened, but um, it does it sucks, right? It, it feels really shitty to to have to cast and have to see the teams in that place because, uh, like as Cubby says, it's not aspirational. And Travis released a video actually this morning about. I haven't watched the full thing yet, but it's about how aspiring pros just don't aspire to it anymore. Like, it's a backup. Mm -hmm. It's a, oh, I'll do this part-time. And maybe that is where League Esports is going, where it's, we, we see, at least in, you know, NA and maybe in EU, where we see teams less invested on the, oh, it's your full-time job. And instead, it's like a vocation that you do until you make it pro. And then when you make it pro, sure, you can afford to, to do it full-time and try and push for it. I think yeah. as well, then, I would like to hear from Finn, particularly, from, like, a play. He did you're... actually write in our chat that he was going to talk, ah. and I think maybe you <laughs> and, just ignored uh, that, Jimmy. Oh, I, maybe you I want did. me to go back to hosting? Shit. I could do it. Hey, yeah, guys, welcome I think to the jingle. Finn would uh, like to talk. Uh, uh, yeah, Finn no, from you Denmark. Have to, you have to yeah. redo the intro first. <laughs> 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 anyway, from a player perspective, I think it's really interesting, because I like I, this aspirational part that you both of yourself and Cubby mentioned, and, and it not necessarily being that anymore. Yeah. I mean, I just think a lot of people are kind of realizing that the, the work to 
payout ratio as a pro player these days aren't that valuable. Maybe I think before when you looked back and you looked at these big arenas and like it was so glor like everything was just full of glory, it was fun, it was hype, but now like you sit in studio for three splits in a row and then you get to maybe go and play in the arena if you're top three. Uh but also like when streaming is so adjacent to becoming a pro player, like you can use stream and play your solo queue, you can just chill in Grandmaster and just stream, get like one K viewer, two K viewers and make similar amounts now because because pro player wages are going down right now. Uh, they're not like as crazy as they were a few years ago. Um, I, I don't just feel like people don't really see the value in it anymore. They don't mm-hmm. see the, the end, end, end of the line because it's still like, in the, it's one in like 100,000 that make it, you know? So like, yeah. is it really, like you want that to be a complete cash out, kind of like making it to the NBA or like you, but, but right now it's just, it's not even that in a way. And, and it's really sad to see how it's going because I feel like the the free split system kind of cops out. Like they're they're allowed to make one, they allow them to do like a one final arena per year, right? But even in America, they still do two offline events a year, right? As far as I'm aware, uh, it's just until one this year. Summer now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This spring was uh, in the OCS studio. Yeah, and it definitely felt different. I mean, I think the highlight for me was I got to actually talk with like some folks I wouldn't usually get to find like a big arena, but. Yeah, it wasn't nearly as fun as like going to an event and seeing a new town and enjoying. I I I really enjoy you know seeing people that want to go to these events too. Like, I feel like localization is important, and you know having people on the East Coast that are never able to go to the LCS studio be able to see it like their local arena is really big for the game, and people really enjoy that. And I I appreciate like Finn too. Like I know I was talking about aspirational from like the lower level, like people that mm-hmm. are just thinking about whether they want to pursue this or not, but also even the higher level. Like I mean, you're 100 percent right. You and there's been at least in NA like a small exodus of pros we've had recently, and I like I gotta believe it's because of what you're talking about with what you can make off streaming. I mean, like you can't tell me Double Diff actually was thinking about play, like you know really playing this split outside of maybe one or two offers, just given what he could make off streaming, right? Like, like and it's yeah. like at some point, like even him playing last split, I guarantee he lost money off that. Uh, with yeah, yeah he did for sure. I mean, if, oh if yeah, he, he was open with it as well because yeah. I think he's more like I, I'll play for a team if it's like a top three team because I yeah. think then it's really enjoyable. But being in a bottom tier team in LSC or LC, LCS, it is not fun. By the way, it is very stressful your day to day. You have no job security. Tomorrow is never a guarantee, and you're expected to just like change, fix like ten issues that you're having in two to three weeks, and it's just like not not realistic at all. So there's a lot of pressure on all these players. So like unless you're top three. And comfortably winning games, it's very stressful for sure playing playing in these leagues. Like the mental health aspect is kind of thrown out a window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a, in a way, it's not just fixing your own issues as well. It's fixing like the inter team issues, how exactly, you see yeah. the game and everything. Right, those are like big shifts. And I I do wonder like we talk about co streaming and the, uh, sorry just about streaming, but about like you look at co streaming as well. Right, like, if I were a pro on a bottom tier team at the moment, I'd look at Kadra and I'd say, hey, yeah, I won't get a hundred thousand viewers, but if I get ten. Like that's more money than making in the LEC, right? Why why do I not just apply for co-streaming rights? I'm a smart enough guy. I don't actually have to be like a full brand yet. I can just be a smart guy talking on co-streams and Mm -hmm. it works, right? And you can make a lot of money through that. And I also think that's part of why we see Riot like toning back investment into main broadcast products because it's why all the viewers are on a co-stream or like I think Kadrill actually at one point had more viewers than the LEC normal Twitch for like the first time at finals, right? And that like great for him very happy for the guy but if i'm a higher up and i see that i'm like but why why would i put more money into the the stream that gets less like kadrill is getting more viewers the co-streams are getting more viewers without actually me having to invest anything in that so why would i put more money into my normal broadcasts right and as much as you know there's the argument that co-streamers are basically just i'm going to use the word leech i don't think kadrill is a leech but leech is like a good the term for what they're doing, right? It's leeching the main product and then just applying reaction to it or applying an extra degree of analysis, right? Um, I don't think higher up see it that way. I don't think they see that for a co-streamer to exist, you have to have an analyst desk existing. You have to have all the security staff existing. You have to have the people doing the lights and the tech and everything existing, right? Um, so I, I think part of the luster as well will be taken away because there'll be less investment into the broadcast product because yeah. people mm-hmm. see numbers on the co-stream it's like well we're getting the numbers anyway without investing into the product 
So why would I invest more money into the product? Right? That yeah. that's something that always blows my mind. Is like if, like if that happened in a traditional sport, there is no way that that would be allowed. And B, that no. person would then be on the broadcast, which has been proven by like a personality like Pat McAfee that covers American sports out here. Like he was doing his own show. He was an ex uh, player, and he was so good and so funny that like now he's a part of a bunch of broadcasts. Well, that's just because Riot won't pay. Right? Exactly. Like, I, I know it is. Right, but like the, it's, the rates the riot pay are so much less than anything you can make uh-huh. co-streaming, right? So. Yeah, I, it, yeah, I know it is, but yeah. yeah. yeah oh, I yeah, wanna... Again, I, I agree with your point, Cubby. Right? Yeah, I, well, you've been teasing the co-streamer conversation for a while, Manic, yeah. you know, behind the scenes. Hey, let, so I'm, let I'm him, with you. Yeah, the, the thing is as well, though, is like I want to talk about it more from talent perspective, too, because I know yeah. like yourself, Medic, you've been established for quite a while and Cubby, you've, you've been around, too. But like from my perspective as someone who is like very new, so to say, to this industry, it's like uh, I started it because it, it was kind of like an accidental thing. And then the first real big event that I saw, there was like a big international event for me personally was Worlds last year. That was the first time I ever tuned into Worlds. And I was like, wow, I want that for myself someday. Uh, but then I'm looking at the way the discrepancy between the LEC, I'm looking at the discrepancy and the LCK or the LPL, and it's like, okay, realistically, like I'm probably never really going to get that because it feels like I came in now at the quote unquote wrong time where it's like, you need to work multiple games to be able to make a living. And then on top of that, you also will most likely never get to experience the well the bells and whistles that previous talent got to experience because every single year is just being scaled down and down and down and down so to what extent is new talent realistically going to have that experience of working in an arena working in front of a live crowd doing things with like fireworks and fucking random cgi dragons like that's probably never going to happen uh do you want to go first or should i cubby you you go you 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 actually experience this man you know uh, yeah okay so yeah. I think hmm, I think you can still experience the sort of stadium atmosphere and those big events to a degree like it's specifically about your example the sucky thing is like shocks and law exist and they're incredibly good at their jobs and mm-hmm. so you missed the boat in when you needed to join to be like the talent that would be the premier spot right and eventually uh, like if shocks leaves if law leaves even if they don't and you just surpass them, which definitely you could, right? Like then you get into that spot, right? But I would like, for me, the reason I got into the position I am was I got in at the right time, right? Like mm-hmm. Pyra left, uh, Pulse left, and then it was quick shot on Dracos and they needed another play by play. It's like, well, I exist, cool. Three play by plays is good for the league and I'm kind of grandfathered in from there. Um, I think that the ideal f- to get back the heights of esports in league is for Riot to take off their stranglehold on the league and we go to like a major system and we do what CSGO Ooh. is doing, right? And you have different production partners leading different events. And then you have these big big arena events and you can um, put one event against the other as uh, for a talent point of view, like from a monetary point of view, it's a lot easier if Blast is hosting an event and PGL is hosting an event to get paid what you're worth, right? In the audience's eyes. Whereas if Riot owns the event, like I, I, I get paid by Riot probably a quarter of what I get paid by someone else for the same work, right? And that's, right, I accept that. I work League of Legends, that's the game I want to cast. I have to accept that because Riot owns the product, right? Um, but if we move to that, which maybe we will, maybe Riot eventually will say, League of Legends Esports is good enough to sustain itself, which it did originally, right? And we don't need the stranglehold on the broadcast. We're already giving away all the narrative control anyway by having co-streamers on all the time. So what was originally a, we want to be able to control this now is gone. Because uh, like they don't control co-streams to the degree that they control um, the the main broadcast, so why not just have a major format, or why not just sell the league to an EGL or a ESL, sorry, or a PGL or a Blast or whatever, mm-hmm. and then have majors or have these like have stronger international events. Now I think that the problem with that is it's always going to reduce ERL, like um, it's going to reduce the pipeline that immediately goes in, and maybe you'd have. ERL is being hosted by an ESL or whatever. It's just that it's more likely to die. Um, but that's how you get the prestige back, at least in terms of international events and such. Or you get Riot to finally admit that League Esports being a marketing decision is fine. 
and it doesn't actually need to make money, <laughs> right? Like, it, it's an incredible marketing opportunity. Like, if Faker ever uses a skin, he does it incredibly rarely. I think he's used, like, one skin in, in pro play, but people buy those fucking skins. If they watch him in solo queue, they buy this a skin that he might wear. Or, I mean, Faker's yeah. a bad example because he doesn't use skins. Caps. When Caps mm. uses a skin, the sales of it go up, right? When a pro wins with a skin, the sales of it go up. Are those sales attributed to esports? Mayhaps. Not going to say directly no, because I don't have that in writing anywhere, but from everything I've heard, no, right? So any of the money that esports is actually making is purely through sponsorships and ticket sales. And ticket sales will never co cover the cost of an event, and sponsorships will never cover the cost of an event. So either you sell a lot more sponsorships, or you accept that you are a lost leader, and that's fine, because it's a good marketing exercise. But I don't think Riot's ever going to do that, so... Yeah. We're fucked, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Thanks. Like, I was really, really looking forward to some reassurance that I didn't just fuck up my life by quitting my You haven't. You, you do an incredible e job in a lot like of esports. So, just like, do, like, if you want that experience, get it in Rainbow Six, get it in CS, get it in Rocket League or whatever. And, like, uh, the, the ground roots of those esports are harder, right? Because they're less frequent and you're yeah. less likely to have, like, the league based structure we have in League. But if you want one big event a, a year, then you stick in League. If you want more than that, then you either have to diversify or you have to diversify. Or pray to God that we will get changes. more international yeah, events I in just, League. I just don't see it happening, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're getting one extra this year. But again, we're getting EWC this year. Yeah. yeah. But again, yeah. that's not Riot sanctioned, right? That's exactly. just they're allowed to use League. Right? But it's like Six, we got $60 million prize pools, you know? Shit. Yeah, that's pretty oh, insane. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I I think that it's kind of wild to have you know medic dropping truth bombs like this, but it it is true. It's what he does. I mean, I'm just I frustrated. It's why I, like, he's I'll here, be honest. You know? I, I came I mean, out I'm, of another I, split of yeah. LEC, and I'm just annoyed because I, yeah. I I do miss 2018, and I miss 2019, and I miss 2020 when it felt like we were actually a leading broadcast in the space, and it just doesn't feel like that anymore. And I, it's no harm to anyone in on the LEC. Everyone working the LEC is working their fucking hard out to make it the best yeah. product we can. But when you don't have the investment and you don't have the st like we lost like 27 stuff the people yeah. that made the cool shit aren't there yeah. anymore and as much as i can tell all of you out there like and subscribe to the the jungle it still hurts me that the lec is struggling right but you should like and subscribe obviously because you know you that's, should. How, that's how i make my money now <laughs> so like, yeah we, we yeah. should because we're, we're gonna stay on the topic here on the lec particularly because obviously like that's the discussion that we want to have in terms of like the lec finals and how that went we, Sorry, we, Kobe, went, a kind of, we went a little bit no. on a tangent but but that's okay you know that's what podcasts are for you can air your frustrations like free therapy to an extent but from the lec finals um I think a lot of people came into this expecting it to be a 3-0, but Fnatic on that first game felt like they figured out what they wanted to do. But it looked like they just kind of went down the toilet after game two, and then G2 just raffle stomped in the most disrespectful way possible. I don't know. I feel like G2 just came into this final and did like a case study. Like, it's so weird because I feel like they just came into this final and tried to figure out, can we, can we win with these uh, lane swaps? And like, how, they, I feel like they came in and wanted to master the lane swaps. Like they didn't even care about the results. They came in <laughs> to the finals yep. and they were just trying to lane swap every game. Because I know G2, if they're trying to win, they're going to put BB against Oscar Inin. They're going to pick like Kalista or Draven for Ansama and they're just going to stomp them. But they came in and they like put the biggest discrepancy in players, in my opinion, top lane, away from each other and made it completely even every game, early game. And I feel like it's just like, it's just so weird that the team is so far ahead of the competition that they can do that in the final. Because I don't actually think that's like... If they came in and said, we're going to free zero this final super hard, they're not lane swapping at all. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think, like as you say, the biggest mismatch is BB, who has had... He's probably having the split of his... Like, the year of his career so far. Like, his improvement continues year on year. Uh, he's very far away from the international disgrace BB that he was a couple of years ago. Um, and it, yeah, it, it's, it's also... It's strange to see G2 be able to do that. Because Fnatic looked goodish against BDS. Like, when they switched off the scaling comps, and I mean, it looked goodish. I'm not going to give them good, right? But when they stopped Finch just playing, just hey, we're trying to outscale BDS, and they actually played aggressive in the early game. And when Razlok was on a jungler that was proactive, they could actually do stuff, right? It's just, there's such a gap. There's su like, such a division. Like, it's it's more one team region than I think it's been it's felt at least in the last couple of years. Oh wow, really? I because yeah. like for me at least, 
I mean, I know that the final wasn't that close, but I actually felt like the competition below it kind of was. Uh, I'm I sure, but like that's like yeah. it's. I guess like, one, one team, team region is like G two are far and away the best, and then there's at least a, a pack of chasing, but no one is close. Like it's a forty percent gap. I feel like it's been closer to the past, but you're still right. You know, I don't know. What what, what do you what do you think, Finn? Um. <clears throat> Well, G2 is really good, <laughs> I think. Yeah. And everyone else is very, very average. Like, Finn, can you I won? ask? Like, yeah. You watched LCK Finals, right? Yes, 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 yes. Are G2 very good in a global sense? Or are they just very good in an EU sense? And obviously, it's hard to judge. We haven't seen them internationally this year, right? But would if you looked at G2's gameplay, how far below uh, Genji are they? And like, you can be as honest as like, you. I think people are... Saying they're a bit worse than the extra. I don't think G2 are that far behind Gen G. Uh, just because I know like what's happening in scrims at, at Worlds, and I know that G2 are doing quite well. Like scrim world champs, let's go! But 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 it's also like the fact that G2 get like a third or a half of the amount of practice that these guys play get on stage. So I feel like the other teams are just way better adapted to the stage gameplay. Uh, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, G2 gets like one split of nine games, and then like some playoffs where they just two zero, three zero, everyone in a way. So it's like yeah, maybe, maybe they need to lose more games. Yeah, because if play they lost content. more games in playoffs, the they get to play more stage games. Mm, I mean, in general, I'm, I'm always a big advocate of stage games because the lessons you take from stage games are always like way, um, way more like precise and way more important than the ones you get from scrims. Like, um, I don't know what comparison I can make, but like losing a stage game, everyone is sitting and rewatching that stage game three times before they go to bed at night and they're all thinking about what could have done better mm -hmm. people don't do that in scrims like there's just so much more intent and focus learning from stage games than there would ever be in scrims and the fact that we play so f many fewer stage games are like eventually it catches up i think yeah. and I, I think that is a big part why we're behind the the, the eastern teams right now but because they get so much more practice on stage and they get a coach coming and screaming at them when they don't start a fight around Nasher at 25 minutes when they're 4k up. They get that. We get like a coach who says, yeah, I think we should have probably been more aggressive on the turn here. When you lose a stage game on a fucking, on, on a Monday Do you evening. think that's because coach, like Vox and I, we've all, that's like all of us have had this discussion on the, the jungle before, but is it coaches in EU don't have as much power? Is it a player-led decision-making process? Uh, I don't think it's about power. I think it's about competence and, and expertise and of of forty in the team. Mm -hmm. okay. I I don't I don't think the I mean okay you can always make this like culture that like in the Eastern culture your elders are a bit more respected than in Western culture and that is definitely true. That is that is very true. But I I do think that coaches in in the West have like a lot of room for improvement. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a PR answer or like like I'm stepping on, on stones because I'm currently signed to a team with a coaching staff, which I do, <laughs> which I do, which I do like. I, li I like them a lot. I, I do like my coaching staff. Okay. But it's like in, I mean, it's just like, like it, Finn. <laughs> but, but it's just like in general, uh, I do think coaches in Europe, they are just like not pulling their weight maybe as, as much as they should. But also like, yeah, but what do you do when you suck screaming like five five games a week and then you get two stage games, like nine game regular season? It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know like what's what's the solution here. But I think it's a huge, huge factor right now. Why maybe like G2 struggles internationally or, or like our teams in general. It's, that that's interesting to hear. I know that like we've talked a lot about coaches, but for me, like in terms of the improvements you want to see, you, you kind of handed it like you know having a coach that's capable like recognizing like hey we should have taken this opportunity but do you think it's like just more of like the skill of the coach is being able to recognize that or the emotional skill like being able to like hey i do have the relationship with my team where i can like get on them here and we're okay. going to respond okay okay so these coaches mo most most good coaches in, in in league in my opinion are former players the best coaches are former players but these coaches come from a very different game usually like when they were good, the game was very, very, very different, very different at a macro scale, as a, at a at a gaming scale, like so so much worse when they were really good. And I think some coaches maybe haven't like kept re replenishing their knowledge about the game. I don't think maybe they they have watched enough or like actually 
done this research because they still like hammer in the same concepts as they did maybe four years ago or five years ago. Like, I don't think coaches have changed that much from 2018 to 2024. Like in terms of the concepts they're trying to teach, which I, I, I think players have. I think players are kind of learning more. I think league is a game of details, right? And and the more you go into the details, the deeper it gets. And I think that's where we're outclassed by, by the East because I think they think about so many more different things. They have way more when they f- far more concepts they consider when they go into reviews. They they consider like God, I, I don't know, I don't know, like we're, we're, like the the setup for dragon starts four minutes before the dragon starts. Yeah. Do do, mm-hmm. do you think teams in Europe start thinking about dragon four minutes before dragon starts? No. No, there's no way. But I know for a fact that Asian teams do. So it's like we're we're just behind three two point three minutes in game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or you get my point. Like I, I think we're just. I th- uh, yeah. I, I don't know how to put it nicely. No, yeah, yeah like, that makes sense. No, I, I think I absolutely get it. But I I think also something that you brought up particularly was like when you're looking at the LCK. Let's take LCK finals for example. I'm assuming everybody and their grandma watched the LCK finals because they had like 2.6 million concurrent viewers without taking into consideration the fi- was, like the Chinese viewership. That's crazy. The whole really like fun. arena was incredible. I don't know the capacity of that arena. If anyone knows, please do drop that in. If any one of you guys know, no, but. On my head. Looking at the players and them getting that experience of playing in front of a crowd and an audience like that, when it comes to these international events, that that could also that is then also so to say you're used to it. You're like, oh yeah, oh MSI finals, ha, twenty thousand people watching. Oh, I got that at home for the regular season finals. Like, why why would I be worried? Why would I be anxious? Why would I have stage fright? And I think that's something as well to consider for the LEC and LCS teams because just the sheer capacity and the intensity of the crowd watching just isn't there. And I think that's to an extent for talent as well. It's a whole different experience. Um, but I want to talk about the LCK finals because Gen G T1 is a rivalry as old as Fnatic G2, if not older, uh, if not as old as time. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. But how do we feel about that? Because we went from Gen G T1 into Fnatic G2 and it's like, good, good day to be a league enjoyer. It, it was. I do, ironically, like, this is my favorite time of league year. It's when all the teams that are going international are decided. For me, that's, like, almost more fun than the international tournaments themselves. Uh, and, th- like, this final was awesome. I mean, if you're a fan of league, like, th- this final was great. Like, I-, I really feel like all, like, both teams and all 10 players at some point did show out in the series. And I think the thing that was so fun about it is because I, the, the, the map control of Gen G was just so damn good, like, from game one. Like, I, game one, uh, they, they played this, like, Rumble Azir comp, and they were shifting lanes to, like, get better matchups into, like, what kind of defenses that T1 was buying. And T1 was choked out of every turn from the map, and yet they still found so many ways in a game where, I think it started off really bad for them. They were going to get outscaled. They're like, okay, we're going to lose this fight, but it's close. Or we might take this Drake and barely lose this fight. And just every single way they found a way to chip into the lead of Gen G or like get themselves something on the map. To me, that actually felt like the story of the series because T1 were playing comps where you have to play faster or like the onus of execution and fights is more so on you. And it was kind of a, like the challenge of can they overcome Gen G's setups to actually do this? And more often than not, they did in the series, which made it super fun for me, like just as a fan. Yeah, I agree. I think. Um... The the early macro from Genji looked like the best in the world, especially in game one. Like the rest of the games was really solid as well, but game one just their movement was absolutely sublime. It, it, it yeah, was, it wasn't yeah. the the Azir was on T one if memory serves correct. I forget in who game Chobi one yeah, was it was playing. Uh, but... It was the move of um, they shifted Rumble to bot lane to catch a wave, and then they swapped into taking I think it was second grubs. Yeah, and it was then crazy Chovy shifted bot while Keen went mid, and that yeah, it was. Uh, just the early shifts to stop uh, T1 being in a good position, especially considering T1 were playing the Draven, which you know you want to get an early-ish kill on. Um, it was yeah, it was just really really beautiful to watch. And I think T1 are like the make it make you sweat team at the moment. I remember, uh, I think it was 2019. It was a Fnatic G2 series, and one of the voice comms came out, and even though G2 were losing, Perks just said, "Guys, we might lose, but we make them sweat." It was the right. Hillisang Bactor game. Yeah, it was the Hillisang. Uh, yeah, so it was 2019 summer then, yeah. I think, right? I was yeah, like, yeah. Even though we're losing, we make him sweat. It was with Promise Q? They played with Promise Q, yeah. Yeah, it was with Wrists. Yeah. 
Um, so when the Wonder Pit rise and it was like a million kills against yeah, Bootput GP. It was, it was just like an really insane good game, game. Really good game. It was such a good game. Probably my favorite game I've ever cast. Yeah. Um, You'd like to like, cast it, was, it actually. That's, that's yeah. a great game to cast. Um, but yeah, he just said, we're going to make him sweat. And I think that's what T1 do incredibly well, right? Like they're set up around objectives and their ability to make the enemy team not realize something. The amount of times they do like a 20 minute a Baron and like Genji would be a little bit late on it and be like, oh, they're doing it. And then they'd have to react. And it's like T1, oh, T1 are there. They know how they want to, want to play out the situation. And Gen, it's just, it was, it's very fun to watch them even from behind. I mean, it's, um, it's, like, it's, it's like in chess, you know, like if, if you have a winning position and you play the second best move for 10 moves in a row, mm-hmm. but the opponent plays the 10 best moves for the next 10 moves, he will have caught up to you. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of what T1 does. Like even when they're behind, they're doing their best possible play that's available to them. And if the enemy doesn't always like stay on their toes and also play the best move, eventually they will like get a lead. They they will get a hand back into the game, and that's very, 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 very hard to do. Honestly, like I, I, you, you gotta say like this is incredibly really hard to do. Yeah. This is a very, very hard line to walk. Yeah, because I think that's something we don't see as much in EU. Right? Is Teams, when they're behind, tend to turtle a little bit more and be like, oh, we need to get to this spike or we need to get to this point and then we can fight. Yeah. Whereas T1 are just like, how do we optimize these next like two minutes of getting as much gold as we can and making the enemy team have to make decisions? Um, it, yeah, it, yeah, like it is wild seeing that from T1 too because I, I, I feel like part of why so many people love T1 and almost why they get so many hall passes at times as a team is because this is a roster of five players where on any given day, I feel like any of these five players can just be elite at their role. And they, like T1 for me, consistently is challenging themselves to do that with some of the drafts they play. Like no one else is playing some of the picks that Kerry is able to play. Like owner is playing a, a, a much more aggressive jungle pool than what we saw in LAC, which I know we talked about quite a bit with like earlier on this podcast or like past episodes, about like how tanky the jungle pool was in EU for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Um, I like, they are always challenging themselves to get more. And that's ve- like ve- a very different approach in LOL compared to like what T1 had in the past, where it was kind of like, all right, we're going to get to this point where we cannot be broken. And we're always going to get here because we are the best players. But now it's like, how can we break the game? And we can do that so often because we are the best players. It- it's so fun to watch them like try and consistently find ways to get themselves back in. One thing I've noticed is that whenever the teams are at their best, right? Let's say Worlds uh, semifinals, the meta always, always the, the last couple of years becomes range supports. They make it. They make because, the meta. Because when you play with a range support, you have to have such a insane understanding about how the map works, how to regain vision, how to control your own vision, and especially how to punish enemy lanes. And only like a few teams in the world can do this at the same time. And those are the ones that actually make it far at Worlds. Because I think if you look at 2022, 2023, I'm going to have to look at 2021 if it's through there as well. But, but when there's like four teams left, because every, every world starts with engaged supports, Nautiluses, yeah. uh, whatever, like, you know, the classic, the classic. But then come semifinals, suddenly, Ash is like first picker ban, Heimerdinger, Caitlyn supports, like, like there's so much weird shit happening. Uh, and I think that's, that's what T1 are doing. They're like, they're, they're, so w- w- one way that uh, Asian teams are scrimming is that they are very, very aggressive in scrims. They cannot treat scrims like we treat solo queue. That they, they, they will limit us a lot in scrims. At least when I scrimmed the last time, 2022, they're very, 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 very aggressive. Like They don't play on stage like they do in scrims. But they are like trying to re- like gain some kind of muscle memory of like where how far they can push it. Yeah. And I think that's also because they're allowed to do that because they get so many more official games. They get so many more... Mm-hmm games on stage that they can that they can take lessons from because in the in the west like it's always like okay like let's not make our scrims too too wild let's just try to emulate stage as much as possible every team says this by the way in europe by the way everyone is trying to say, emulate stage as much as possible but i don't think the teams in east do this i don't i don't think they do this in the same way i could be wrong because i didn't scrim asian teams since uh summer 2022 okay. so i i could be wrong is this disclaimer it's I interesting. Like, would, would you just? There. Yeah, I think it's very important. We just put an asterisk and have the little foot, yeah, yeah, yeah. footnotes. Fine you know? print. Yeah. Uh, do Do you think that we should just have more games in Europe then? Because we talked about this a lot on the on the podcast. I, I don't think there's a single player in the LSC that doesn't want to play more games on stage. Ooh. Uh, unless they're scared that they will get exposed. <laughs> but you know, like, I, I don't think anyone 
any player would like to play fewer stage games. Like, I think everyone wants to play more. All right, so if it was a, like, five days a week, you play three best of fives in a week, uh, best of threes in a week, you would, would prefer that? To... I would love that. Okay. Just fewer scrims, more games that matter, you know? Even if, say, say you had to play the games online, and this is not me, like, trying to make you say no. I'm just thinking, like, from a broadcast perspective, it doesn't make sense to light up the studio every week. But if we are moving into a... Oh, we'll just make a bare bones broadcast because co-streamers are going to get us the viewers anyway. Maybe they say, "Oh, you just play online, right?" And we just have the casters, and there it's like the LPL, right? Where, or like I know the LPL plays in the studio, but the casting setup is the same as the LPL English, at least. I mean, I don't mind playing online, but I don't think I'd want to play for my office. Okay, does that so make you, sense? But then they wouldn't be able to like the problem with having more show days or more days is they have to light up the studio, right? So yeah, if you're no, there, they have yeah. to do the yeah. whole thing. I'm just saying, like, if I go to a different location where there's just five pieces lined up, I'm playing like in a room. They could be okay. a little, they could be a little picture on the wall, like of stars or something. I don't care what's behind me, but just like a different, different place. Just not this this office where I go to every day and get my coffee and eat my bananas. Just like an actual different location. Do you I, think that I, teams I would... would provide that? Like, do you think you could just have a like an, an official room and a non-official room? And it's like, okay, well, this is where we do our official games. This is where we do our non-official games. I mean, you should. Yeah. You should not play your official game. Uh, what, what is it? You don't shit where you eat or, or whatever? <laughs> yeah. If you're okay. shitting at your pizza, I mean, it's so like you, I guess, right? So. <laughs> I, I don't know how the saying goes, but I, I, I wouldn't want to play official games from where I scream or like where I play solo queue or where I'm like in my office, you know. I would want I would want a different location for that. But whether that is online, I, I would take that over playing nine best of ones in one season. One right, makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, for LPL particularly, the games were held in the JDG mm -hmm. arena. So if there is a team with resources, I think KC announced that they were also going to create their own like gamer arena, whatever. So that could also be something. Maybe that right. is a solution, you know, like Where it doesn't need to have a yeah. crowd, doesn't need to have like a big set. Oh, it has a crowd. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure they do. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Well, like L LPL teams, they have home stands, so there yeah. are different arenas they can play in, so that's always kind of mm -hmm. nice. Uh, like at least having other options. Yeah, I just don't think you can ask each team in the LEC no. to make an yeah, arena. Probably right? not. I, I think no. Uh, no, rogue arena, it, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm not against if a team chooses to do that, they get rewarded with having games there. Yeah, of, course. Well, of course, of course, one hundred percent. They should be able to yeah. milk that shit if yeah. they do this. Yeah. They should reap all the rewards. There should be this. financial incentive in for, for doing that. And I think when we're looking at LPL, I guess we're bringing the conversation there now. Is that the teams have the resources available to do that in terms of having the financial resources, having the fans, having the turnaround? Like if if your arena is sold out every single time you have a game, like that's great. And then you also giving the players that experience of playing on a stage and the games matter, not just in terms of mattering that you're making it to playoffs, that you're making it to MSI, that you're get, getting your points. But it's it also matters because there are people sitting there that took time out of their day watching you and if you shit the bed that's really sad because these people are tuning up on a work day because lpl is not always on the weekend they're turning up on a weekend they're like holding little signs like yeah let's go and if you you know i guess that also sucks and it's also a, an incentive for the players to get better and then you get the practice in for the international yeah. stage because you're used to playing in front of people i mean to like to finn's point like these players are like you're a competitor if you're going to be good at this right and I think that you're going to find very few players who would want like the same amount of stage games that they have now in Western regions. Like it, it, it you got to be envious looking at like these five, six day schedules with multiple best of threes in a week from all these teams, and then yeah. be like, "Well, I'm going to play my two games, and whatever happens on stage in those two singular games, where I can't, you know, at least prove. Even if you drop a best of three, I mean, there are a lot of ways to prove that, like." A lot more opportunities to prove that you actually did your homework like you had good mm -hmm. games like there were good things going on mm -hmm. if one game goes sour on stage and like that's the story for the week and then you're cooked like it's, it's on to the next one whereas best of threes and like that stinted schedule like that you may only have a couple day turnaround to prep for the next one and you're gonna have like a fire on your ass a lot more to be like okay i have more opportunities on stage then how can i cash in on these right 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah, yeah. yeah. fully agree Definitely something to keep in mind as well. Um, well, LPL now, they also have their two, two teams qualified for MSI. So we're looking at BLG and we're looking at top esports. The first time for the organization to be making it to MSI. Something really interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has really had a chance to watch them. Because I know it was like LCK and then like 
LPL was already happening, was like three games deep, and then it was like one game left of the LPL, and then the LEC already started, and it was a great time to be alive. But when it came to the LPL, particularly like the last few days that I had a chance to really sit down and watch their game, what stood out to me personally was the way that they team fight in particular. It felt like in in the LEC, when someone gets caught, it's like, oh, caught, oh shit, fuck what up, let's, let's all like, you know, let's minimize our losses, and everybody just ran the fuck away. But the thing that I noticed a lot on the LPL particularly, like if one person gets caught which is already very rare the whole team's like all right let's go everybody just like fucking balls to the walls as deep as we can go we can turn this around we can play this out mechanically we're probably only like 1k gold behind anyway let's just make sure that our carries can play this safe from the back everybody just throwing their bodies in front of the cc and that's scary to look at because if we're gonna be like ooh, and the other teams are like Let's get it. It's a it's a very different aggression that we're looking forward to. Uh, do you know what LPL teams do more than another team? Is uh, it fight over cooldowns. No. Oh. In game. Oh, I mean, yeah. You know what they do the most out of any team in any region? Because I watch a lot of Pro View and I, I know mm -hmm. I picked this up. What do they do? They ping a lot. Okay. They they ping a lot in game, and mm -hmm. this is not because there's language barriers. Because there, I've watched five Chinese native speakers ping a lot as well. And I feel like that just makes everyone a lot more aware of what's happening. There's a lot more on my way pings, like hold yeah. pings. Like they will ping lines where if enemy crosses this line, we fight. Mm -hmm. They like show, they like visualize this in game with pings. Wow. So this is a, like this was a, one of our practice focuses actually in in Rogue in in spring. Uh, maybe we didn't like do this enough. Maybe we didn't reap the worst of this uh, yet. But this is something to keep in mind Leaks. that these teams are a lot more on their foot. And I feel like. Because when you just communicate with you ver verbally, like there's sometimes you guys notice if someone speaks to you, sometimes the information just goes out the other ear, and you actually don't like pick up what they're saying, especially if you're focused Sorry? on something. What did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Because <laughs> because you know if you're really focused on something and someone tells oh. you something, the information will just. Mm -hmm. This is this is like human. This is human. This is very human to happen. And if I'm like laning against someone and we're like trying to bait our skill shots, sometimes I'm not aware of what my teammates are doing. Like I I'm gonna be open with that. But I think with these pings, they really do help everyone kind of like keep people more in the in the game and be more aware of what's happening. Maybe that's the, why they have more cohesion. Like this could be something, you know. Like yeah. I, I think it's something to that's interesting at least that I found very fasc fascinating. I mean, it's getting everyone on the same page as well, right? And it's why yeah. Riot is deliberately trying to nerf the LPL by introducing the solo <gasps> queue ping limiter. Oh my god! It's, it's a big conspiracy. T1 have actually bought Riot Games, and they want to win a Worlds again. So they're nerfing the I LPL. I mean, they literally did. Wait, did yeah, they yeah. use they themselves oh, getting oh, okay. DDoS by Riot Games as cover for buying Riot Games? Exactly. That'd be so a they bought Riot zone. Games, so they can't get DDoS, and they're stopping all the pings from happening. But there's no, uh, there's no ping limit in custom games. Ah, well, oh, well, get fucked. Yeah. Obviously, you know, Tencent wants LPL teams to win. <laughs> yeah. so they you can be, in be really toxic in scrims. Ride doesn't care about that. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah I think they, LPL teams, like, they've always been more willing to fight. And I do think they, um, like, maybe it's being on the same page and being able to, like, you reacting to a pre-planned aggression is much easier than reacting after the aggression has happened, right? So it's like, if they yeah. cross this line, we fight, rather than, oh, they cross this line, should we fight, right? Um, I also think they do play a bit more around, uh, like, timing windows. So it's not always about, like, how strong is the enemy team. It's like, I've hit my spikes, and it's, two, like, three minutes before the Drake. Let's see if we can burn a flash. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can do this thing so that the Drake fight becomes easier, which is, I will say, for my... My own sins. When I was watching LPL like a few years ago, and I didn't understand macro as well, I'd be like, "Why the fuck are they fighting? It's just razor beaks." And now I'm like more aware of, "Oh, they're fighting over razor beaks because if they burn the AD's flash, then he doesn't have it for this objective in three minutes' time, right?" I'm sure it's like just taking something. more space on the map, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. You, you right? kind of just like checking if your opponent is willing, you know? Mm -hmm. If you go and you like start hitting the razor beaks, either they're gonna come and fight you, or he's gonna get the razor beaks, like. Yeah. And they're just, they're just like inviting like it. They're inviting that fight. And I think that's obviously what you should be doing. You're you just got to be on your toes a bit more. But but you yeah. should be aware. Like, okay, they have a, they have an off to this. Okay, he's going to hook from the fog. If I can sidestep this hook, we're going to win this fight for sure. Mm -hmm. so, stuff like this, you know. I, I know they're aware of it. Like, everyone should be aware of this. But stuff like this, like, it's, yeah. it's important. It's yep. important. And, I mean, when it comes to that, and, like, kind of the style you've been hinting out with some of the LPL teams, both of them, I mean... I was excited to have these two teams, actually. I, I, I thought the JDG, for me, obviously, is a fantastic team. But mm -hmm. 
if we're talking about fights and timers, there's no one's going to push you harder in that than BLG and TES, like, just trying to fight, like, at whatever vision they, like, they can see. But there are very few instances where they see fights that they can't take. And on top of that, these guys fight extraordinarily well. The patch is really good for Kareem as an individual player for TES, yeah. too. A lot of his to champions, see him internationally. Yeah, a lot of his champions are getting buffed up going into in MSI, which is going to be really fun because... Uh, his Akali is, is nasty, and a lot of people are going to enjoy that on the big stage. They haven't seen it before, but um, it's definitely something where I like. I know that like a lot of the times, you know, people spend their time being like, "Hey, which region is the strongest going into MSI or you know NA versus EU?" And for me, I'm honestly just really excited to see the four teams that are being sent from LPL and LCK. I, yeah, I, I really would be surprised to win. Shit, so. <laughs> well, I mean, I, we'll see how G two stacks up. Like, I, for real, I, I, I think, think TL that, looked okay as well. I don't think, yeah, like, I don't think either G two or TL take like a series off an Eastern team. But I'd like to see TL's hey, macro. Guys, Brox is not here. You don't have to toot the TL horn. Um, they have no, good I, fundamentals. I think their macro was good. Like in the finals, yeah. they looked much, much more coordinated than FlyQuest. I don't know if their laning is as good as you know the other top six teams, but. I mean, uh, it's as you say, uh, what do you say, a, a, a slug is faster than an ant, or, or, or I don't know if there's a saying like this. But, I'm pretty uh, sure ants are really fast, yeah. like they just grab your shit well, and you blink and it's gone. Uh, but you, you did say against FlyQuest, that's just what I'm trying to say. So, okay, so I don't Wait. quite get it, Finn. It might be a Swedishism <laughs> that hasn't translated. What What's the idiom mean? Language are you, are you, you said you said you said I think you said you thought TL, TL had really good macro in the finals, but then oh, you also added. Like, oh, guess, they're both shit. Okay, I get it now. <sighs> I get it now. Yeah, that, I, I, that's I, I, actually good. I think I used the wrong animals, maybe, but but you. you oh get, no, you, no, you a slug is point. faster than an ant, or like yeah, I get it. Both are slow. That's what we're going for. I'll just spell it out for our audience. People it's on like the internet word. tend to be dumb, Finn. So I'm just going to say, no, I'm, Finn I'm, thinks I'm all also, North American I'm also really teams dumb. are really bad. Finn, who played for Rogue, who didn't make playoffs, thinks all the North American teams are really bad. Oh I'm just, my yes. God. Put that into the ether. Well, for no, no. He did make playoffs, but not as a player. <laughs> You know, he went on the East Hill. I actually made finals. Uh, he true, went to yeah. finals. You got further yeah. than I did, Finn. He, he, took, he took the old school double lift route to making it, you know. Yeah. No, I, I, mean, I can say this because I watched a lot of LPL and LCK, obviously. Mm. And uh, you guys, I'm not here trying to say that Rogue was really good last split. Oh, no, yeah. we're just that, 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 that is not what I'm trying to preach. <laughs> there is no preaching here. Uh, I, 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 think, I think we have oh, yeah, a lot I, of work I, to do. Just, uh, so. Same goes for m most of the Western teams. Mm -hmm. Speaking Clearly. of Western teams, let's talk about some roster changes because I opened Twitter today and uh, Carbine Core Academy, Jungler, Vitality, Daglas, Bo. Okay, I feel like for KC particularly, we had a lot of discussions in terms of like, what are we expecting them to do? They obviously said there was going to be changes. We were like, is that something we want to see? Do they just want to keep their current roster? You're probably not going to be a Worlds anyway. Save your little coin in this economy. Get, an, get a great team next year. But yeah, that doesn't seem to be the case from uh, what, what we're hearing or at, at least the rumors so far. No, the the jungle is getting welcomed to the jungle uh, in the LEC. There's just a huge swap going on with everyone. Uh, there are just grown junglers on on trees out there on ERLs. I Feels will say I, I I've heard of uh, Linkus. Linkus. The, I, I have yeah. heard of his play, and I know that like he comes like with pretty decent uh, accolades into ERLs, and then the other one that was kind of like live is that apparently Closer is now on K Corp, which is yeah, that's Pretty big. actually a little bit insane. Well, it is. He what? hoisted a LCS trophy and was playing in TCL, and now he's just going to K Corp. So literally got leaked in the last five minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah. technically twenty four hours and five minutes because this is not going to be live until tomorrow. No, because it's like for us, it was within the last. Um, five minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know, you just I wanna... assume people understand that yeah. we don't say this live. Every well, day. people think that we can control the amount of games teams play, like. That's but you guys can't. No, I'm Bold just here to complain. <laughs> Why am I saying all this then? I'm just here to I, thought, I thought they keyed you in at finals, Finn. Uh. Um, I'm surprised Bo's been taken off Carmine Core. I wonder if there's like Absolutely. a more like an attitude issue, like a, a disagreement between staff, not Bo having an attitude issue, like a disagreement yeah. on how to play the game. Because I feel like Bo wasn't set up for success in any way. Like his mid lane often would fall behind. His top lane often would fall behind. And as a jungler, like. What are you meant to do? Even his bot lane, like they they struggled as well, right? Like, how are you meant to impact the map? 
But right, maybe it's like I don't know. Ask it, Rogue. It, <laughs> okay. Their top lane only ever wins. True. Yeah. But true, okay, I, I, I was, yeah. I was like, if you have, if you know your KC right now, you know your KC, you know your team is like doesn't have the strongest laners. Maybe, maybe they don't want to pair like Bow in a team like that. You know, maybe they feel like they're wasting Bow a bit in in their team, and it's just not the best fit. Yeah, but then why get closer? Yeah, uh, closer I mean, closer is a lot more experience. I think facilitating, like he's, he's yeah. he has a lot of competitive experience in the West. He knows how. How, how shit Western players can be. Like he knows that he has to cover some waves here and there. Like, <laughs> so you think uh, it's closer's more likely to bend to helping the team? Okay, than, than okay. I, I I don't think closer alone as a roster swap will mm -hmm. fix K Corp. Oh, definitely not. But I wouldn't no. be surprised if there's more roster swaps coming in from K Corp. I doubt it's the mm -hmm. only one they're gonna do. That's what I would think at least. Yeah. I mean, they've already talked about bringing Callista in, but obviously he's not 18 until August, so you can't really bring yeah. him in. Then they gotta then. make playoffs. <laughs> yeah, like they have to make playoffs, and then. Like, honestly, I think Cabochard, it, like Cabochard and Saken, I would be looking at replacements for if I were management. I know they've had the loyalty discussion with them where it's like, oh, we yeah. wanted them to be part of the team. They've been with us for a long time, but I don't think either of them showed that they were like LEC caliber in, in the last couple of splits. Well, it's a bit worrying as well because like a guy like Cabochard who has been stomping RL for two years, uh, it makes me worried for the RL top lane talent right now because I feel like right, right now there's just no one to really look at. Do you not think top lane in EU is just not the greatest at the moment, generally? Like, mm. even, oh. even in LEC, I wouldn't, apart from a few players, I wouldn't put many people as like, oh, I look at them as like a top lane carry. Oh, obviously, no. Obviously, you, Finn. Oh, no. And then like, Thank you, Medic. You're so, you, you are so, so like, sweet. You're laddered like, with Oscar, honey right Oscar now. Oscar made finals. Isn't, like, uh, I'm not saying like he can't play well-ish, but he's not a great top laner. Like, he's developing and growing as a player. I would never put him at the same level as any like top laner I want to see at an international tournament, right? Yeah, sure. No, I don't think top laner right now in Europe is that good either, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but obviously they're... you're going to raise the level. In yeah, like, you're obviously to... I'm, I'm here to elevate and escalate. Yeah, the... yeah. With your pings. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just question marks on the enemy top over and over again. <laughs> see, in NA, we're too worried about like our own pings to the server, so we can't even get this far in the first place. There's uh, really levels to uh, this. It's, 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 like, it's like Voldemort in, in, the, in the training rooms. You can't even <laughs> mention the word ping. That's <laughs> funny, though, because like, you look yeah. at the LPL particularly, like top laners like 369, where it's like you put him on the weak side of the map, you pull all your resources in bot lane, and then this guy just fucking comes out of nowhere, beats the shit, and just fucking slaps the other top laner up and his team with it, and you're like, great. If LPL teams are winning through top lane and EU with the top lane discussion that we just had is not that great, what are we doing? I think, I, I can't remember who said this, but there was, there's a great quote about 369. I think it was Zeus. That he has the, okay. he has the, he, he looks like a, he looks like a bear, but it's sly like a fox. Uh, or something like this. This is like yeah. kind of the quote. I can't, I can't remember the quote exactly, but I think that, uh, Zeus said this because 369, he's that. very, very tricky. He plays a lot of mind games with you when he's mm. playing. And he 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 gives this appearance of someone that's just here to play tank and go even in lane. But he's like doing a lot of things that maybe are hard to see as a viewer and maybe even like as 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 as, a, as a, like an analyst. I think a lot of people don't see this, but he plays a lot of a lot of mind games because going even in a bad matchup it's not that simple, you know. Mm -hmm. You, you got, you gotta, because because if the enemy plays the matchup well, you get put in a positions where you're kind of losing no matter what. And that, that, pro players are good enough to do that. They they know how to play matchups usually. So the way he gets out of this, is, I think usually he has very clever and sneaky ways with like base timings and fog of war stuff like this. It, it's not appreciated enough. He's really really good. Three six nine. I, I'm watching a lot of his vods lately, and you you pay attention to these things way more when you see it from his POV. Yeah. It's just hard to decide that there's not a pro view from, from LPL. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, it's really difficult to tell those stories sometimes, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had similar games where you maybe you listen back to the cast or you watch something afterwards and you're like, they didn't highlight at all the fact that I was even on CS in a bad matchup because of all these yeah. fog of war things I did. And it's like, yeah, we just didn't look top lane. I'm sorry, yeah. there was fighting in bot lane, so I just had no focus on top lane. Also, I don't understand the matchup as well as you do because I'm a caster and I play in master and you're a challenger player, right? Um, yeah, of course. I think we miss a lot of that stuff. And it's also, I mean, coming back to the discussion we had at the start, that's why people like co-streams at times. Because like, if you're a co-streamer, you can just, you want you want to pause, you want to go back a couple of minutes and look at a specific interaction, you can, and you can you can add that viewpoint, right? Um, back to the swaps. Linker's coming in, I'm actually excited for. I think Daglas. 
was fine for Vitality, uh, but Linkus has been consistently really good in the ORLs, and he is a little bit more aggressive than Douglas, I think. I think Douglas was very utility support focused, and I think Linkus has a, a, a few more tools in his toolkit, but we'll see. Oh, Finn disagrees. Hit oh, me, Finn. let's get it. Hit me, but I, I don't know, because you get a rookie like Douglas. Douglas came in, you know what he was playing or every, or in the ERLs? Diego Belvef, Diego Belvef, Diego oh, Belvef. So just, yeah, you're gonna say. And then, and then yeah, you okay. put him on Vitality with very volatile top, probably the most volatile bot in the history of bot laners, <laughs> and Vito, who is a very resource focused player. Mm -hmm. And you kind of mold this guy into Real Mao Kesedrani. And then you give him two splits, and what? He's out. I I think it's it, it's like it's it's, it's a tragedy. Right. It's a tragedy. Do I understand the decision? A bit, yeah. Linkas, he's good. Is he like... But you're still like replacing a rookie with another rookie. A rookie yeah. you've yeah. been developing for two splits yeah. mm -hmm. for another rookie. I, I don't. I thought Dagawas was like fine too. I, I th actually yeah. thought he was playing much better this split than that split. Um, I, I can yeah. give you that. I think like... If I were to change anyone on the team, I would probably change Douglas or maybe yeah. Vito. But uh, I understand your point where you are just replacing him with another player that has a similar set of champions in, in the ERLs and is just coming up through the ERLs. So I think I agree with your point now that I've thought about it more, Finn. It, it's interesting. Okay. I heard that the staff wanted to work with Linkus like on a few different teams. I mean, Matt and Pat, yeah, Matt and Pat. have liked yeah. him. For, uh, Matt and Pat sorry, have liked him for a long time. Yeah, for a long while. I mean, there's Which, that yeah. like there's something interesting in that for me. Like, uh, I know that obviously, like this is a pretty small ecosystem, and you get to know people. And uh, as a coach, like if you want to put your chips somewhere, and that player has enough trust to kind of like go with you, I, I do find that somewhat interesting, right? Yeah. Are there any potential changes that we're looking at that we could be expecting from KC? Because like I know we touched upon the discussion of like. Uh, Saken and Kabusha are both having that loyalty to Carmen Core, but also then there's a certain loyalty to the fan base where there was the promise made that they will try their best to make it to an international or make it to an international. Realistically, to make it to Worlds with the points that they have being exactly zero, they right. need to win the whole split, no? No. They need no, to get top three in summer to and make it to finals, the finals, yeah. yeah. They, they need to get, get top, top three in, three in summer, summer you're splits. automatically in season finals. Yeah. So they just have to get top three in summer. Just. Just, just yeah. yeah, I was gonna say like bottom of the table, two splits in a row. Like yeah. you, you need to change the whole roster. Spend the next few weeks scrimming, like what, six, seven days a week. I don't it's know also how many... finding scrims, right? Like uh, a lot of teams will take a short break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, G two scrim their B team more too, so that's not a good look. Start off, you know. Oof. But I like. I, I also I, like for KC. I know they promised this year they wanted to make internationals, but maybe they just like do what BDS did. Like BDS, it took them a year, year and a half to really get into the league. And now they've been top three. And I, I, yeah. I know people will say they haven't won a best of five this year and they got third both times, but like they've still been top three in the LEC. It's the format's fault that they haven't had to win a best of five to get there. Um, maybe it just takes a little bit more time. Because like coming into this year, they were short on money, as far as I understand. Like they spent a lot of money investing into the LEC and getting into the league. So I, I wouldn't have minded. Maybe they just pr over promised. They should have under promised yeah. and over delivered and be like, hey, it's going to be a, a rebuild year for us and we're going to develop into next year. But um, it's quite hard when the fan base is as vocal yeah. as wanting everything that they want, right? Which uh, is also understandable when things have been. Promised. Well, I thought it was clear to everyone that it's like a slow start for yeah. K Corp because it's just like if you, if you, if you, if you go in your first year. And you have like high aspirations, you try to build like a good team in Europe, like, yay, let's get top two, let's get top three. And you, meanwhile, you leave these loyal pieces that's been with you for so long, like Seiken, Kabushar, Targamas, like these guys have won you, these guys have given you all your like victories. Points, in, yeah. and, and you leave them behind in ARL, and you, actually, and you actually don't get a good first year, even though you like tried to, to. It's kind of like a spit in the face, you know, and I think that would be really bad. So I think it makes so much sense that they just tried with these people. I think Kabu. Targa and Seiken, I think they all deserved their spot in LEC, considering how they were doing in ARLs. Sure. And I think it, it just didn't work out. Like, even now, like, I've seen everyone say to replace Kabushard, like, I, I, I hear you, but, like, I also need to, like, with who? Like, with who? I mean, that is the question. Right? Mm -hmm. like, like, I like, think, you know, with like, Bo leaving, maybe they go international, right? Because they were looking at Thanatos. 
Yeah, but Phantos is yeah. allegedly cloud going somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, Cloud9. You don't have yeah. to say allegedly, you can just say, man. No, no one's going to hold our, our word as gospel here. Okay, right? okay, okay. It's, is he going it, to Rogue? Is that what you're alleging? Like, yeah, it's... he will He will be my positional coach. Ah, makes sense. He will sit there and whip me every time I miss a creep. <laughs> and scream in Korean. <laughs> she <bows. laughs> Yes! <laughs> Oh, this is what uh, prevents us. We, we, from I, 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 I found the budget for that. Right? Yeah. You yeah, want true. a coach that would scream at you. There you go. Yeah. I mean, Broken Blade having Alfari as positional coach, he says he's leveled him up a huge amount, right? So no, of course. I mean, maybe that's what that. we need to do. Absolutely. Just get more positional coaches for for the Western teams. That was that's what discussion. NRG did so well, right? Like you had, they had like five, three, NRG, three, four yeah. positional coaches yeah. last That's So as Demonte Apollo, like, yeah. I, I mean, I think that there's a lot of power, especially like after a stage game going backstage and sitting with people that have been in your shoes before, you know, Dude, that's, that's really powerful. I would love a good top laner to just, I have his mind. He, I, I can, I can I do whatever make, I want to him. I can, I can make him play any matchup I want. I can tell yeah. him to like, go watch every, every, every bin game and tell me like it was something. Yeah. Like uh, a guy that understands it. Like, I'll, I'll, after the podcast, I'll give you a name. I don't know if you've talked to this person, but I'm what, 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 what an absolute, Privilege. Oh, hundred percent. To have that. Yeah. Thank you so much, right? Vitality had it as well, if I remember correctly, for their top laner. So uh, this Who's was discussion. Yeah, they, they got Chachi for uh, playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chachos, nachos. I remember the discussion that we had about this with Brox as well, in terms of like having those positional coaches. But then again, like budget is always something that then comes into question. Same when it comes to playing three Bo threes a week, like budget again lighting up the studio having all these things available having all these resources uh speaking of resources actually uh tim lad 5105 these are the community questions and tim lad dropped a question by the way leave a question down below we'll do our best to answer it uh i think this again comes down into resources but why is there so much downtime between splits it can't be good for teams that aren't going to msi and can't play for two months <laughs> yeah finn you want to chime in on that one because like <laughs> you've been on a holiday for a while um, I mean, what, what can you do? Honestly, like, what can you do? You, I think it's a bad idea to stay and scrim after the split is over, because you have so much baggage already. Like, like, okay, so what options do you have? You have one, you stay screaming after you're out for like until MSI starts. You you skip screaming with G2, Fnatic, PDS, all these teams in playoffs for like three weeks after you're out, and then what? You go take a break when they take a break and they come back. It's like kind of, um, it's kind of useless work you know like you, you're just overworking yourself and you're kind of like not seeing any rewards because it's still the thing like it's just scrims like mm -hmm. you can only get as much from scrims i think you need to play more games to actually take the, the hard lessons uh so what you do you go take a long break and then you start to play early but the only teams that start early is going to be teams like rogue casey gx so th these are the teams are going to be screaming early and then you have like rl teams so you're kind of put in a position where no matter what you do your value of practice will not be the highest until these teams are streaming again because mm -hmm. you, have, you have lessons to learn. Right? So I think the best thing to do is just to watch. Watch, watch a lot of games and just just watch. Just watch watch good League of Legends and, and, and try to actually think about it. Just actually like actively watch. Go watch a B BLG game and like look 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 at like what they're doing at three minutes before Drake and then see exactly how their jungle support moves for the next three minutes. And just focus in on this. Hone in on this. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's like the best thing you can do in these positions. I, I, I don't think like excessive screaming is going to help you. I, 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 re yeah. I really appreciate what Finn's talking about. Like I know that you mentioned earlier that a lot of this game is, you know, having the best mind for it and the top teams are able to do that. And I, I mean, I think that in order to get there, you got to put the best people behind the scenes in order to help you get there, right? Like this game is a theory and you have to come up it, the rules change every three weeks for how this game works too. And you, you ultimately have to keep up to like stay in front of all this. But I, I don't, I don't like shit. Where was I going with this? I, I think that like at least having like the help behind the scenes, like kind of what you're talking about. It is really interesting. Cause like ultimately like you're like, I want someone as smart as me at my job to like, we're going to go out and do this work together. Right? Like look at this, feed me this. And then what can we do with it? Right? And I, I find that like very interesting as the approach because I know that at least with other games like CSGO I, I, or CS2 now, they will spend hours talking about the map and how to use utility. Like they will, and that's a game where you think like, oh man, mechanically, you do have to be so much more precise with your mouse and keyboard, or arguably, uh, like compared to League, like you are challenged a lot more to like have your mouse, you know, 
uh, be able to react and click the right spots. But no, they spend so much time on theory for how they can maybe create an opportunity where one person has a free shot or you get a free look or a man advantage. I I find that a, like a very crazy part about CS in the ecosystem. And I find it interesting. You're like, I just want people to like be able to like, hey, look at this tape and how can we get more opportunities for ourselves, right? I, I find that very like similar. Yeah, so I guess then like to answer Tim's question in terms of why is there so much downtime, but it's just the, the scheduling, like you can't really change it. Do you punish the teams that go to international and have something else going on? You can't do that. So unfortunately the downtime is part of it. I, d I do think like if you move to a more best of three orientated program, there may be a ways to like have them not overlap, but you could end MSI and then have a week and a half to two weeks of the other team best of three. So if you wanted to start the league early, right? You'd say, yeah. okay, teams that went to MSI, you don't have best of threes for the first week and a half. Then you fly back, you have a week to prep. And the, yes, the downtime, I mean, even if you have like another week or something as a break, right? You can give them a bit of downtime while still having league because you're not showing every team every day anyway, right? And maybe mm -hmm. that reduces it and you get more games in. It's similar like in football, if you have someone playing a Champions League match, maybe they don't have a match as early in the weekend or something, right? You have to okay. move matches around. So maybe there is a way to reduce the downtime, but uh, you can't do it with our current format because every yeah. team has to play. And what you would one. need, you would need like a like a Europa Cup kind of style, you know, like where you have yeah. a, a tournament for like the fifth, sixth place from every region. Uh, you could do that, yeah. yeah. Or you could just do, you could start the, say after MSI, you'd start the second round robin of spring or like other, you start the summer. Sorry, you start summer and it's just uh, Rogue play KC, uh, Giant X play uh, BDS, and then a week later you have the Fnatic and G2 coming back into the the, the rotation, right? Yeah, I, I think LPL does roll. something yeah. similar. Maybe you could do that. Yeah, yeah, because LPL gave was it RNG a break after they won MSI? Yeah, they yeah. didn't have them play for like three weeks or something, yeah. or two weeks, I think. Yeah, and yeah, then they, but then they, they had idea. Asia games, so they had to condense everything. Really, <laughs> yeah, that was wild. That was uh, wild. That was crazy, yeah. Respect to the teams that make it. Uh, we also have another question from Corey Zai, and this says, do you think they could implement a replay system in League of Legends that's similar to StarCraft? Basically, you can watch a replay of a game and start practicing from any moment. For example, you could replay a tower dive that went wrong. Would a tool like this help players practice better? So if I understand it, it's like, correctly, is you go to a certain point of the game where shit hit the fan, and you replay it, and you start playing from that specific moment. I think when it comes to League, that's not necessarily possible to do because there's like other nine other players that are moving parts that are making individual decisions. I mean, I, I, I don't know enough about the technicalities of it, but like mm -hmm. all you do is you play the game to a point. So like with Chrono Break, yeah. you play the game to a certain point. You just repeat every action that's happened to a certain point and then you start the game again. So the... The idea of there being multiple players is as long as you can load each person into each character, the uh, replaying a tower dive shouldn't be too difficult. And I think it would be a very niche tool, which is probably why we don't see it, right? Because when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's easier. You just say, how many units does everyone have? Where are they on the map? Cool. Yeah. And how many upgrades do you have? Whereas now it's like, well, who is going to use a 5v5 replayability tool? Only people that play 5v5 because you can't just do a, a 1v1 replay, right? Um, so I, I, I think it would be amazing. I think it would definitely help the quality of practice because you just replay a Baron fight 10 times, right? Like, yeah. imagine being able to do that. It would be fucking insane. But you're I mean, never going to get it because it's just sounds like resource intention. It would be like the dream, but it's also unrealistic that this will ever yeah. happen, you know? This is like a pipe dream for pro players. Like, this, I mean, uh, I think maybe if the league client gets, like, remade yeah, yeah. from the ground up, because I don't know if you can do it in Dota, but there's a lot of stuff you can do in the Dota client you can't do in the League client nah, because I mean, of how like advanced it is comparatively. I would love this. Like this would be, of course, like insane. Every pro player would yeah. love this. It would be so nice. You could have like so much many more. Because you know, like in football, they have like drills. There's like you yeah. can practice different things. There's yeah, you so just many set more up different a drill. Things. Right? Yeah, it's like today we're practicing this balance yeah. setup. But in League, you play scrims and you play solo queue and you watch vods. Those are your three things you do to improve. And then you like work on your mindfulness. You like meditate, and you 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 don't eat unhealthy, and you you try to keep a good headspace. That's like what we can do. So you're not a real league gamer because league gamers necessarily don't have the best mindset. You know, our yeah. community is very not toxic. You got a rage. I mean, I mean, I get paid right by an organization to play the game, so I kind of like ah. have to 
bring them some come in with some kind of integrity right <laughs> to, to some degree Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Um, disclaimer I'm, I'm not like you where i just like into solo queue and scream on stream that's I like hey it's great entertainment you know like people watch it that's all i'm gonna say they they love to watch the suffering they do I, I, yeah concerningly I, so yeah i know that um th this is something where i i will say that something that dota has that i feel like it's pretty easy to do for league is that I really appreciate during their big tournaments, like their majors and their international, you can spectate those games from your client and quick, like click around and free cam throughout all that. Oh, I feel so like even good. stuff like that would oh. just be a huge help. Yeah, because... Twitch overlay as well is so fucking good. Oh, I hate yeah. it. I hate, uh, I hate the fact we have none of this. It makes me so mad. Yeah, like I, I mean that's a huge tool because like then like what Finn was talking about, like hey. Let's go through VODs and we can look and talk about jungle support setup. Well, guess what? You have that raffle file just at your fingertips where you can control everything and scroll through as fast as you want. Uh, I mean, a raffle like, file is more a time league replay file, VODs. by the way. He's yeah. not saying rolling on the floor laughing file. Just I mean, for yeah. people that don't use replay. <laughs> the, wow, you, thanks, you, Medic. There is a tool for pro teams to get this. Not for LPL, but for LCK. We can have oh, this. Oh, yeah, the, um, yeah, okay, the back yeah. end. We, we, we actually have this for, for LEC games, LCK games. Okay. L LCS That's as good. well, if we want to. <laughs> Give it to the people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Give it to the people. Uh, but, but yeah, Pro Teams has this. Just not for Wait, LPL. Really? Okay. So do you know, like, what, are, what is the people going to do with it? Because like, I get it from like a competitive advantage for like players, coaches, get, whatever. Give it to them and find out what I'm, they do. Well, I'm, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So I, I was going to explain how it works because it's a lot of hassle to do this, okay? Because you need yeah. a tournament client, which the game is played on. Yep. You need to update it every single time the patch changes. You need to update the, the new tournament client because there's six tournament clients yes. playing on three different patches all the time. Yes. So when patch 14.5 uh, comes out, the one that was on 14.2 is just like scrapped. That that patch is like going going back. It rotates all the time. So you need to constantly update this, and you need to have all these clients like ready to, to use for the for this yep. uh, program. So it's a lot of hassle right now for the people to, to do this. I don't think it's realistic right now because then they have to give out tournament client to everyone and that mm -hmm. kind of ruins the point of the tournament client. Um, one of my main frustrations with League is that Twitch overlay, there isn't one. And if okay. I'm watching um, if I'm watching Dota, I can literally hover over a character, a hero, are they called in Dota? Yep. And then see their ability leveling. I can click on their ability and it tells me exactly what it does, what its scaling is. I can click on an item and it tells me what it does. I just, I have no idea why Riot have never just made something like that. It, it yeah. makes zero sense to me in terms of accessibility for the game. Like there, like there are some games where like I might be watching a VOD and be like, hey, I'm interested. Like there are two different Oriana builds. You can go Q Max or W Max. Like what do they do? And yeah. at least that's a damage character. So I can kind of tell. Like what they actually put levels into, but maybe it's not like on the POV, like what they actually did. Or even did. like stacks, man. Like yeah. the fact that uh, yeah, some, stacks too. you just can't see stacks sometimes. Anyway. Yeah. 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 That's an entirely different complaint. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. rant again. I, wanna I would love the power yeah. to click around on my own in those you know, games. You know what? We're talking about tournaments anyway. We have the first international tournament of the year coming up. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about MSI. Let's talk about predictions, expectations, emotions, feelings, whatever you want to talk about. Due to the fact that I know respectfully LEC and LCS, I'd be like, oh yeah, all you guys do is complain about the fact that we're gonna get shit stomped. Where's your hopium? We ran out. The supply for talent for hopium has been cut off uh, due to the sheer amount of it, how much it's been used over the last couple of years. So predictions, I am I would love to see an LCK LPL team in the finals. Most likely that's probably what we're gonna see anyway. But what, what do you okay. guys think? I'm gonna make a bold prediction. Okay, uh, go on. G2 is gonna make top four. Oh. All right, that's yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that's, okay, that's bold. bold. Because you guys yes. were saying you guys were yeah. saying you didn't see G two win winning a best of five series against the nation. Maybe that's what I should say. I think G two, I think G two can contest in best of fives against these teams. Okay. Weibo isn't playing, so I don't know. So I I I'm not as low as G two as everyone else. I think yeah. G two strength is that they're pretty re really creative. Everyone on that team thinks a lot about the game. Very creative. They will all like brief the game. They have a lot of coaching staff around them that like helps them do it, and I think they can they can they can surprise like mm -hmm. they, they they can for sure like I, 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 there's there's for sure like worlds where they win MSI. I'm not saying there's a lot of worlds, but you know like uh, okay I can see it. You know I'm I'm not as low as G2 as everyone else. Like I think they they will do fine. I get that. I think um, maybe for me I value it less partly because Last Worlds was a shit show for them, right? And I know some of their play like. 
obviously there were no excuses energy beat them on the day they were a better team on the day but like a lot of their players were sick and such around that world so there were some issues for g2 um but maybe i'm just low on them because we only see them against eu teams yeah. and yeah. Like, you see them in scrims as well so you have much more tape i just see them shitting on all the eu teams so i'm like well they don't look amazing beating the eu teams they lose some games here and there um maybe I, they'll do well i can just I see would... them elevate themselves coming yeah. into a tournament i can see them elevate to the level of the best teams very fast if if they have like, I, I'm not saying they're gonna do it. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but I'm saying there's a world they will they will do it. You know, like I don't, I'm not as low as them as everyone else. I am ready to see Chovy win his first international title. Is his first right? He hasn't won an international no. before. No. Yeah, I'm ready to see him win his first international title. I think he, he's the best player in the world, and I think he he has earned the right to win, and not fucking choke internationally again. Do so. Do you have Genji as the favorites? Um. I need to watch the BLG test series. I think BLG probably are still my favorites. Um, okay. But Genji did look really good against T1. I, it, I mean, I, I know it's a bit of a cop out to say it's a toss up between the number one seed from LPL and the number one seed from LCK, but it's probably a toss up for them right now. Yeah. And until I see the next BLG series, I, I'm not going to make my mind up. I yeah. think BLG with their series against Top Esports, they really proven that they are the better team. I don't know how, like, you know, maybe Top Esports take it personally, do some VOD review and realize their curveballs weren't curvy enough. I don't I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think BLG is looking great. I, I do think that Knight fits their team so much better than what Yigao brought, just mm -hmm. given, like, the team strengths. Yeah. I don't know. I That team's going to be scary. I, I don't know who my favorite is. I'm gonna, I'll probably say Gen.G, but I will say that this is one where I could see... Like a lot of the two teams from LPL and LCK, like I, I there are going to be differences in how people power rank these teams, and I can, I there's none that I'm going to like probably just like very much disagree with. I actually think the level of all these teams is like they're all coming in with their own strengths and weaknesses. I, I think Genji might be a cut above the rest, and T1, we all know what that T1 roster can do, but mm -hmm. man, BOG is insane, and TES are insane, and I feel like they can break any plan that like any team throws their way, so. It's going to be really interesting to see. Um, and I'm excited to see like how G2 goes into that. Finn, uh, like, your faith in G2 and improving, is this just like the five guys that you go up against? Like You just have faith that if they're going to be exposed to a higher level, they can just get there faster? Is, is, does it come from that, or is it just kind of like the skill these guys have? Or uh, They're all yeah. the best the region has, right? Yeah. And they're all competent players. They have good working ethics, and I think put them in an environment where they can thrive and improve, I think they'll do it. Is it enough? Maybe not. These teams have been in this environment for far longer than they have. But uh, I, I think G2 can do it. I mean, my favorites are BLG uh, to win the whole thing. I think uh, BLG is just such a individual, like, complete powerhouse in every role. Every role. I think BLG's bot lane is, like, really, really, really good on an, on an Elk. And I think Bin is probably the best top in the world. Like... Uh yeah, Ben's crazy. I like, he's ben, ben, this ben year is too. Ben is really, 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 really good. Like this guy is completely yeah. cracked. Um, and I, I think that I, I, I'm really hyped for Keen versus Ben. Obviously, this is like, uh, like I think almost any top player whose end uh, name ends with I N is like really, really good. Uh, most of them are really, really good. Uh, most, guy. most, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Oscar Winning is is not the best, but uh, we have. <laughs> Well, to be uh, fair, yours ends with I N N, so I guess you're not like pulling yourself in that, right? Okay, that's kind of true here. Yeah. yeah, you kind of fucked yourself there, didn't you? <laughs> uh, um, uh, closer officially announced by KC, by the way. Mm. Ooh, like, wait, that, that they confirmed it like minutes after yeah, so, the leak. So Damn. today was oh, they're trying like new jump junglers into Sheep Esports saying oh, the closer's gonna join into them putting out a very badly photoshopped picture no way. of closer. It is, yeah, it's Carmen Core official account. Oh, yeah. the, this Photoshop is, is so obviously not his body. It's quite funny. Damn, hey. they, they must have saw us. Oh my god, it's so terrible. Yeah. They, they must have saw us the Sin, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's all they needed. Wait, what did they say about Bo here? Uh, he's benched. <laughs> choice results in the benching. Oh, yeah, it just says bench. Oh, he's been given authorization to explore his options. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well. That's... Do you think they just get an import top then? Because they no longer have an import? But they they already had an import slot open, no? They only had the. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had one, but maybe they just like maybe they won't import top mid. Who knows? I hear knights available. 
Maybe don't there's some. <gasps> may, maybe there's some. Don't, don't be in the shy. <gasps> could be. It could be the best. <laughs> don't be in the shy. <laughs> Honestly, KC Doinby would be. I, I would. I'm, I'm pretty sure Doinby be being like the shit. biggest League of Legends streamer in China. He's not gonna give that up. There's no way. Probably makes a bit more than KC. But the Casey. power <laughs> of France. Le Blue Wall. Blue Wall. <laughs> the, the power. Ma ma like ma ma I mean, you know, I'm gonna say it. If they're gonna change top, they should probably look towards America. Like Ooh. Ooh. I mean, we have good options. Like we we are overflowing on talent, honestly. I, I'm oh, just saying. That's that's the, nice. TCY, right? should, I'm just gonna say that they're not gonna find the top better than Cabo Short anywhere else. Okay, I, I, I'm, wow. gonna, I'm gonna say that. Like they they won't find it in in, in Europe. I mean, Cabo Short's kind of proved that over the last couple yeah, of years. Like but, yeah, like he's just stomped ERL. I mean, I mean Short got a lot of like flack when he during the LEC time. I don't think he was like that yeah. great in LEC by any accord. I think he was struggling a lot, but he is better than every RL top laner. Like yeah. like that that is that, that is just true. I, wow. I, like, I, can, I can say that as well. So it's like... that, that's curious because, I mean, if the Thanatos rumor is correct, then Fudge needs a spot. Uh, the Karish and Someday are still on they the sideline. Probably line. don't get Fudge, but I mean, yeah. I, I'm just saying it out there. Like, like, I think they should look towards yeah. America. Or because uh, yeah. who can you get from Korea? You can only get like a rookie, right? Yeah, I, I've mentioned Surti a that's few right. times on this podcast, and his solo queue account hit like front front page of Reddit. Yeah, it was seventy six percent win rate or something dumb. Ninety two percent win rate. Ninety two percent. Because probably yeah. what's going to be happening is they're going to rebuild. 2025 anyway. Yeah, Calista's yeah. coming in. Because right? so. so if you're going for like a one you split wonder, you just take someone that is available that kind of knows how the game works that you can work with. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think you get a rookie for a one split wonder like. That's un true. Unless, unless you're really cut on budget, of course. But yeah. I don't think I don't think people like people that are teamless right now have the uh, negotiation. Negotiation like impact to actually they get uh, negotiate a high budget. I think they just take yeah. they just take the offer they get. Yeah, you know it's play. just for a split as well, right? You just want to get out there and play some games. Yeah, so you just want to show them. that you still have yeah. it. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's a it's like a win win for Casey. Casey can pay you pretty low amount, and you get like a chance to show that you still are worth a spot. Mm -hmm. And and if you do great, you probably will have a chance next year as well. Yeah, because if you're out an entire year, like your it's chances of getting time. picked up next year are not going up. Like every year or split you're out, it's going down exponentially. Your chance of getting a new team. So, mm. just play, show that you're good, and 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 you'll get a better chance next next split. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for uh, the input, and thank you guys at home for watching. We're gonna be back again next week, same time, same place. So make sure you like and subscribe. I'm pretty sure Medic hasn't shouted that at all. Are we back so. next week? Are we back next week? I don't think we're back next week. We're gonna be back some week. We'll, we'll be, be back, back, soon. Uh, we'll be back on May the seventh. I need to, oh, we'll be back during MSI. We're going to take a yes. short break before MSI starts, and then after MSI starts, we'll be back. Uh, so make sure you tune in then. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I have to fly to China. Oh wait. Oh, uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, If I were going to MSI, I would have to fly uh, to China next <laughs> week anyway. So oh, you just want to see the pandas. Whoops. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's, just it's, just it's a going personal as a trip. Fan. I'm just personal going trip. As a fan. I heard there's like a really big wall there or something. You should check. Yeah, it out. I mean, I've seen the Berlin Wall. I've seen Hadrian's Wall. How big can the wall? Great oh, Wall of China. Hadrian, be, right? So. Top, top All right. three emperors. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll be back in uh, two weeks. That is, uh, if my math is correct. Either way, I take care of yourselves until then, and make sure that you drop community questions because we do like answering those. Bye.